This is going to be a video series on item encoders in Minecraft. My hope is that by the end of this, you'll understand not just the like circuitry mechanics that make it possible, but the math required as well, that not just could you build one, but you could design one of these if you wanted to. An item encoder takes as input an item um, from you know a selection of a wide variety of items, and when you turn it on, it will convert that item into a numeric code of some kind that you could pass along to other machines that would use it. That of course raises the question, why would you want to convert an item into a numeric code of some kind? There's a few uses for this, but the one I've had in mind is bulk storage retrieval systems. Once you get into the late game of Minecraft, you probably have just tons of quite a few items. So pretty much anything that's automatically farmable by products of mining, and you'd probably like an easy way to retrieve those. So some system where you can like select an item you want, say carrots, and the machine will send back to you a full shulker box of carrots or cobblestone, iron, whatever else you want from this system. So the way you would do this practically is at your main base, you'd have some kind of selection panel where you pick what item you'd like a lot of. That would get sent off somehow to a big bulk storage which probably wouldn't be at your main base. Like I know Sidecraft, I think actually keeps their bulk storage in an unloaded portion of the world so that it doesn't cause lag. And it will only load up when something is requested from it. When it gets a request, it will send back whatever item you requested. It turns out it's easier quite often to, instead of sending the item itself to your bulk storage, to first convert the item to a numeric code and then send that code off to the storage system. And then the storage system would read that and say, oh, that's the carrot code. And then would package up a box of carrots for you. It's a bit like how grocery stores put barcodes on all their items. So how do you create a device where you put an item in and you get a code of some kind out? And I should say in this video series, we're just gonna be focusing on the encoder portion of this whole setup. Uh, specifically, my goal here is that by the end, will have a machine that can encode any stackable item in the game of Minecraft in, say, a couple seconds. A lot of the focus is going to be on how we pick codes for our items efficiently. This is going to be a math-heavy series, but I do have to touch on what game mechanics we're going to use to build this device. The plan is we're going to take a hopper minecart, put the item we want to encode inside of it, and then pass that hopper minecart under a bunch of well, blocks that have some kind of inventory. Uh, we're going to start today with hoppers, just because five slots is a bit easier to get your mind around. We'll work up to double chests eventually for bigger encoders. And then what we do is we measure which of the blocks have had their inventories changed. And so in this case, I have carrots in this hopper, not in this one, and then again in here. So the code for a carrot would be, uh, you know, inventory changed, no inventory change, and then inventory change. So in you could think of it as a binary code, so it'd be one, zero, one. In order to keep this from pulling non-carrot items out of these, we're gonna use filler items to clog up the other four slots of our hopper minecart. So that's that's all these hoppers here are doing. So um I'm gonna hit this button. This is a piston bolt, it moves the minecart along at exactly one block per game tick. Uh, we could just roll the minecart along. The problem there is that it's going to spend two or three game ticks underneath each of our filters and pull out two or three items and that just makes restocking the filters and resetting the machine a lot more complicated. So here, got one of each of the filler items from those four hoppers and then pulled out two more carrots. We're going to start with the most naive encoding scheme that you could come up with. So we're going to be encoding eight items. We have eight filters to detect them. So each one of these filters is set up so that if a single item is removed from any of them, the signal strength produced by this comparator will decrease from two down to one. For instance, I think we have a potato in here. Yeah, we send it off. Yeah, a single potato will be sucked out of uh, the potato filter. The signal strength will decrease, torch will turn on, and this, uh, and then here we're just visualizing the code. And what you would do from this point is actually then send this code off to your bulk storage system and do something with it. And then to reset the machine, super easy, we just send the minecart back over, it'll drop a potato in, and then drop the uh, 
pre-fill items back in here, and then actually just drop the potato back where it started. This setup here just breaks the hopper minecart and returns it back to the dispenser. One thing I should point out, hopper minecarts can't push items into other storage blocks. So when this thing returns back over the hoppers, it's the hoppers that are actually sucking uh, the items back out of it. And that's going to come up later because we're going to use uh, double chests as our filters later on instead of hoppers and restocking them is going to get a bit trickier. This encoding scheme here is naive because we're not making very good use of the size of the code here. We have eight bits of data and eight codes, and that's a bad use of the bits we have available because there are 256 possible 8-bit codes. We're only using eight of them. Now we're going to get a bit more clever. We only have three bits, so three filters that we're checking for inventory changes. And here's the encoding scheme. So you can see, for instance, Glowberry, we should get off, on, on. Throw a Glowberry in, send it off, and there we go. One thing to notice here, though, is that the Sweetberry code, which is, you know, all off, essentially means that there are no Sweetberries in any of these uh, filters here. Uh, a problem with that is if you plan on putting any items other than these eight into the machine, you're going to get the Sweetberry code. So if I throw, say, a cactus in or something, none of them are going to turn on as if we had put Sweetberries in. So the all zeros code is kind of like the unknown item code, where you put an item into the machine that the machine wasn't able to recognize. This encoding scheme chart here also tells us how to set up our filters. So for instance, let's take the rightmost filter here. The items that we need to put inside of it are the ones indicated by the ones or the ons or lights, however you want to think of it, in this column here. So we're going to need watermelon, glowberries, carrots, and beetroots. And then I'm going to be using colored wool as uh, filler items throughout the series for unused slots in our filters. I just realized I missed trash day here we're making a lot better use of the code size. In fact, we're making 100% usage of it. We're using every 3-bit code possible. When we bump up from 3 bits to 4, we're going to encounter the kind of the major problem of encoding here. And this is why I wanted to start with uh, hoppers as a small example. This only worked because using the full 3-bit encoding scheme here only required having four items in each hopper. Uh, forward detecting plus a fifth filler item. A problem happens when we jump up to four bits. We would need to have not four items, but eight distinct items in each hopper, and a hopper only has five slots in it. The result is that we have to pick a subset of the codes to include in the encoder. I've reordered the codes here. On the left, this is the standard binary ordering of four-bit codes. On the right here, I've organized them into clumps, based on how many white wool blocks are in the code, or how many ones are in that binary number. Sometimes this is also called how many tokens are in that code. So these are the one token codes, these are the two token codes, three token codes, and you know there's only one four token code if you have if you're using four bit codes. By the way, most of the concepts I've learned to be able to create this stuff, and a lot of the terms I'm using, I learned from Data Nerd, who's also the storage tech community member who got me into this encoding stuff. By reorganizing these into token clumps, it lets us use the capacity of our filters more efficiently. Yeah, you can think of each filter as having like a maximum number of tokens it can represent, and then each code contributes some tokens towards that final capacity. In this case, you know, each of the one token codes contributes one token towards each of the filters. Out of the uh, two token codes here, each filter uh, has uh, three more of its slots filled up. Three tokens in this column, three tokens in this one, three here, and three here. So if we were to only use the codes up to this point, co uh, cooked pork tops, we would only need four items in each of our filters, then you know, plus a fifth filler item. And lastly, we can squeeze in one more code. I'm just using food here as an example. There's nothing specific about having cooked mutton as your uh, 
last code. And as a reminder, the way you would interpret this, so Mutton's code being 1110, is that the first three filters have Mutton in them somewhere, and the fourth filter does not. And the result is that when you throw Mutton in here, oh, it's already in there, you get 1110. None of these, I think, would really be practical, but this one I find mathematically satisfying. So if you're using 5-bit encoding, so your codes are 5-bit binary numbers, if you use all the one token codes and all the two token codes, it perfectly requires each of your filters to have a capacity of five items, which of course is exactly what hoppers do have. The result being for this encoder, you actually don't need any filler items in your filters. You're using them at 100% perfect capacity. So to recap, we have the naive encoder, which is eight bits and encodes eight items. Then we have the three bit encoder, which encodes seven or eight items, depending on whether you count the blank code. And then we got to four bit codes. And now the main limitation on how many items we can encode isn't the number of bits we're using, but the capacity of the filters we're using to detect the item being encoded. And again, this is still just for using hoppers. Next time we'll get into using double chests as filters. Now, instead of getting 16 codes to work with, like you would expect for four bit codes, we only get 12 codes. And then similarly, if you go up to five bits, you don't get 32 codes, you get 16. And this is the problem that we're gonna run into over and over and that we're gonna be resolving as we keep scaling up our encoders. But I think this is as far as I'm going to try to go today. So thanks for watching. Next time we'll get into encoding using double chests as our filters.